There's nothing quite like the joy of moving into your first home, but understanding the mortgage process can be overwhelming for many first time buyers. If you've ever found yourself puzzled by terms like down payment or closing costs, then this video is for you. We'll break down the entire home mortgage process, equipping you with the knowledge you need to make that first big step towards home ownership. Let's go. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name's Evan, I'm a real estate agent and mortgage broker, and I'm here to answer all of your questions. So, you wanna get a house. Typically, that means getting a mortgage. So specifically, the first steps you need to do in this process is your research and preparation. One of the first things you're gonna to need to do is determine the search area you're gonna be looking in for your home. Usually, people buy homes that are very close or relatively close to either family or their job. In addition, you also have to determine how close you wanna to be to either that family or your job. Is 30 minutes okay? Is 20 minutes okay? Is an hour okay? That's up to you and that's why in this stage, that's what you're gonna be figuring out. The next thing to determine is specific home requirements. So, do you want a front yard or do you want a backyard? Do you want a garage that's attached or detached? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? How many acres? Do you want a long driveway or a short driveway? Do you want a deck or do you want a pool? How close do you want to be to your neighbors? These are all questions you need to ask yourself now and determine which ones are mandatory that you have to have in this house and which ones would be nice but aren't deal breakers. This will give your real estate agent a better understanding of what you're looking for in a home. Also, as he's starting to show you these homes that fit more of your criteria, you're gonna see if all of these criteria fit within your budget and if not, what do you have to change? What do you have to remove? Or if it's less, what can you add? In conjunction, you should also be looking at your finances, talking with your loved one, your parents, and your mortgage broker, figuring out how much you should be willing to spend on the monthly payments and how much you're willing to go out of pocket, specifically for the closing costs and the down payments. Now, the mortgage broker is going to be talking about this later on in the process, but it's good to talk about it now so you're not blindsided when he starts talking about some relatively big numbers. Next step is credit checks and pre-approvals. So at this time, you're gonna be speaking with your preferred mortgage broker or lender. I recommend speaking to a few sources to try and get the best interest rate possible because you're gonna be stuck with this loan for the foreseeable future. Uh, there are dozens of loan options available to you, so do your research and speak with your officer to see which one is best for you. Some examples include conventional, uh, FHA, VA, USDA, ARM, Jumbo, and dozens of more. Uh, a good loan officer should be able to give you a rough idea of what you'll qualify for over the phone, uh, but you'll need to provide the following information and confirm it so he can issue a formal pre-approval. To qualify you for your pre-approval, you will need to submit to your loan officer uh, some form of ID, so your driver's license or social security card, your last two years of tax returns and W-2s, last two months bank statements, all accounts, last two pay stubs, 30 days worth, recent credit report, uh, your list of monthly debts, other income sources and assets, your contact information, information on if you own any other properties, if applicable, a down payment gift letter, if applicable, a divorce or separation decree, if applicable, your year-to-date profit and loss statement, if self-employed, if applicable, uh, most recent mortgage statements, if any, and any explanations for any discrepancies or large deposits, if necessary. Once the loan officer has all of your information, this is when they can issue you the pre-approval. So on the pre-approval, it usually is like, congrats, Mr. and Mrs. Smith on qualifying for X amount of money on XYZ property. Uh, this is how much your loan's going to be given your down payment. Uh, this is the type of loan you have. Uh, and this is the interest rate, just giving you the general information about your loan. The next part is the fun part, which is the home search aspect. So where you go around with your real estate agent, you have your pre-approval and your specific budget, and you're exploring, you're browsing, and it's fun because you're getting to see the houses that you could potentially live in for the next 20, 30 years or so. It's important to note that the more detailed information you give your loan officer, the better they can be at their job. So faster quotes, more accurate quotes, and more attractive and aggressive offers for the homes that you're interested in. 
The next step is the full formal mortgage application. So let's say that you've now been approved for your home. This is when the loan officer goes back and double and triple checks all of your information and the documents that you've provided to see if everything's up to date and accurate. It is at this time that your loan officer will give you a loan estimate and they will also bring up potentially locking in your interest rate. The overall process from application to acceptance and to closing takes about 30 to 60 days. The next step is property appraisal and inspection. So as the mortgage side checks the information, the lender will order an appraisal to assess the value of the property. They want to determine the value of the property and if the offer is close to the actual value. If the appraisal comes in lower than the offer, then the buyer might have to make up the difference in cash. If the appraisal comes in higher than the offer, then you're fine. It simply means you agreed to pay the seller less than the true market value. The buyer should order inspections at this time too. In most offers, buyers have contingencies that allow them to back out of deals or renegotiate, you know, should specific things occur. So a mortgage contingency means you can back out if a buyer can't get a mortgage. So with an inspection, the buyer checks the home to see if there's any issues. If issues are found, depending on the severity, the buyer can back out of the deal or negotiate with the seller to split costs on the issue. While all the appraisals and inspections are happening, your loan officer has passed your file on to the underwriter. Now the underwriter is the final layer of defense. They do the final check on your file to make sure that everything is good. And in most cases, probably nine out of 10 times, they're gonna ask for more information or more documents. Now, typically it could be an updated pay stub or it could be a new bank statement, but in most cases they're going to ask. At this point, should the underwriter be fine with everything, you will get a conditional commitment letter, which means that your loan is approved pending a few things. These things could be the inspection or the appraisal, or maybe one or two more documents you need to give the underwriter, but overall it looks good. The next thing is the closing date and closing disclosure. So this is the part where almost everything is done with this transaction. Now this is where both parties, so the seller and their attorney and agent, and the buyer and their attorney and agent come and sit down, sign all the paperwork and make sure that the transaction is closed. At minimum, the lender must issue a closing disclosure and it must be signed by you three days prior to closing. The documents details the loan you selected and the information such as the loan term, the projected monthly payment and other fees. At closing, you the buyer will need to bring the down payment and necessary closing costs. The down payment is the money that you finance yourself for the home purchase. So if the home is 500,000 and you have a loan with a 20% down payment, that means your loan is for 400,000 and you will need to be out of pocket $100,000. Closing costs are out of pocket expenses, not included in the loan, that you must pay that typically have to do with ensuring the sale of the home. So lender fees, appraisal fees, title insurance, attorney fees, and a few other things. Closing costs can vary drastically from state to state and even town to town. It's important you develop a realistic expectation during the pre-approval process uh, and are mindful of the potential changes should your search start in one area and end in another. The next stage is funding and recording. So after the transaction has occurred, the lender will now fund your loan and the transaction will be recorded with your local town and government, making you the new proud owner of this property. And finally, taking possession. Now that all the transactions have been finished, the money has been transferred and every document has been signed, the property is yours. You can now move into your property and start making your monthly mortgage payments. Every step that I've explained to you is crucial on the process from being not a home buyer to being a home buyer. So take your time, do your research, and really understand the process so you can make informed decisions and have an overall good experience. Thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then click the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.